So I use my power drill all the time and I want it really, really handy. I used to keep it in a cabinet, but that was kind of inconvenient. So I made my own holder for it. I'll show you how I made that on today's Filament Friday. So here's the design I created in Tinkercad and it's really just a tube with a mounting bracket and then a big slot for the drill to slide into. So what I'm going to do is rather than rebuild this thing, I'm just going to ungroup it and show you how it's built. So I'll hit ungroup so you can see all the components that made up this design. I started with a cylinder that was 70 millimeters in diameter and 125 millimeters tall. Then I made another one, only made it a hole, 140 millimeters tall and 65 millimeters in diameter. That formed the tube. Now I needed to do the slot. So luckily, under the shape generators, I found this circular trapezoid. It had a really nice shape, and that's what I used in the bottom. But then I needed to square that off, so I added a, a, a block, just a block in there. And then I made those two into a hole, and whoops, I grabbed the wrong thing. <laughs> so I made the block and the trapezoid into a hole, and it formed my slot. Now I needed to make the mounting bracket on the back. For that, I just grabbed a wedge element, and then I stretched this thing out, and I wanted the top of it to be thick, so I had to stretch it beyond the top of the tube, and then cut that off of the block that was a hole. Now I made some 6 millimeter holes to go into the wedge, and that would be the mounting holes for any screws. So those I just kind of positioned equally. I didn't use any special tool. They're all 25 millimeters apart. And once I had all that in place, it was pretty much done. I just grouped it all together, and there was the tool holder. Now, I wanted to print this on my Fabricator Mini, and it's too big, so I needed to cut it into two pieces. So I loaded it into NetFab Basic. This is a free program that you can get. I just selected different views until I had the view I wanted, and then I zoomed out and zoomed in so it was centered to my screen. Now the cut menu comes up and it shows this thing is 125 millimeters tall. So I chose to cut it right down the middle at the z-axis and I chose halfway between 62.5 millimeters. So it should be right in the center. And you can see the line here in the center. Then you just click execute cut and then cut and it splits into two pieces. And in the upper right hand corner it shows those two pieces as cut one and cut two. And then all you do is you right click export part as STL and then you can save each piece as a separate .stl file. And from there you can load it into Simplify 3D or whatever slicer you want and then send it to your Fabricator Mini. So that's what I'm going to do and then we'll print this thing. Now I printed these separately but I'm showing here together as a time lapse and it's printed on the Fabricator Mini and it took because I had it set to a slower speed but it took about three hours for each piece so this was not a fast print and I did it at a 0.2 layer height which was probably way too fine but it just prints so good at 0.2 I just I had to do it so when it was done I just needed to glue them together. Now the two pieces were printed with ABS so I can use 100% acetone here and use that as my glue because as I brush it on it just softens the plastic really really well and then once I've got the two pieces softened up with the acetone, I just squish them together. And it's really soft and squishy, so it's going to glue together or come together just like they were printed. So I'll put a little weight on it and let this thing dry. Okay, so here it is all hardened up. Uh, it's not the prettiest thing because I've got spots that are smoothed out with acetone and other spots that aren't. So if you really want it to look pretty, you probably should have done acetone across the whole thing, but I don't care. It's just going to be beat up by the drill anyway. So one side is higher than the other, so I want that to go to the back. So I'm just going to use two screws in this, one in one half and one in the other half. And I'll just shoot this right into the wood. So there's one. And then I'll line up the back one with the wood. And then I'll shoot the second screw. And there it is. Nice and solid. 
You wouldn't know it was two pieces. But will it hold the drill? Yes. It can pivot a little bit, but it wants to balance and fall right in place. So I like it. I think it's going to work good. So there you have it. It's a very handy tool holder. And a lot of people have been asking me how to split things and print them on their Fabricator Mini. So there I showed you that. Hopefully I helped you out. If you've been watching Joel Telling's 3D Printing Nerd channel, his, one of his latest videos, he mentioned that he was going to send his old Wombot to me. Now it, it was a kit that he put together and he admits he's not that good at soldering and putting stuff together. Um, so he says the wiring is a mess and he offered it to me. He says, can you fix it up? I'll send you the printer because he's getting a new Wombot. And I've been wanting to try one of those Wombots and they're, they're above my $500 threshold I like to stay under. So the printers I use are affordable for pretty much anybody. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to run the test print that uh, Maker's Muse, Angus at Maker's Muse created. So this will be a complete printer. It'll be a printer that was owned by uh, the 3D printing nerd, fixed by Chuck Oliver's Electro Electronic Products, <clears throat> printing a sample print from Angus at Maker's Muse with, I'm sure, some help along the way from Anthony at the hot end. How cool is that? All of us coming together. So that's all I got. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I know it's kind of simple, but um, then again, it wasn't having to put those pieces together and split them and everything like that. So if you liked it, give it a thumbs up. And if you like my channel, please subscribe. I know I've heard from some people, they say you're on every Friday. I just tune in every Friday and then they don't subscribe. You know, <laughs> once in a while I squeeze in another video here or there. So please subscribe. It helps me to get printers like the maker front and and i got something else in the works that may be coming soon so anyway please subscribe it helps out a lot and if you want to help support the channel financially a dollar to my patreon account goes a long way um i have had some people recently give me a donation through the youtube donation channel it's anonymous but all i can say is thank you i appreciate that and i also wanted to mention a company called amica they are a reseller of da vinci products they're a reseller out of poland and they've been a supporter of this channel financially from early on and i've done a lot of stuff for the da vinci jr and recently and my da vinci's and they appreciated it so they've been a financial supporter through patreon for a while and i wanted to mention them because i do appreciate that support so if you're outside the u.s or in poland and you're looking for a da vinci uh, unit check them out. I'll put a link to their website in the description below. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time on Filament Friday.